Welcome to Gear Tasting. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today we are on location at a lake near the shop. I'm not gonna tell you which one. Some of you might be able to figure it out. Either way, um, I wanted to start off with questions over coffee because the question today is kind of lengthy. First, I wanna talk about the coffee I'm drinking, of course. Um, wouldn't be a Gear Tasting and questions over coffee without talking about the coffee. So this is um, Pampa Instant <laughs> Decaf. <laughs> I can't even do it. It's not really decaf coffee. It's, uh, hold on, I got the thing. It's Blue Bottle again, surprise, surprise. Uh, this is Giant Steps, which is uh, vicious, fudgy, and substantial. Um, Giant Steps is a bit more one-dimensional than our other drip blends. Just so you know, we pay for our subscription for Blue Bottle. We know we're not sponsored by them, so anyway, this isn't a plug for Blue Bottle. I just really like their coffee. Anyway, um, get your pound tag gear tasting mug at ITS2 if you, you know you want one, so pick one up. All right, first question. And the only question I'm going to do today. Um, noticed some pictures on from Muster about a black kayak that looked interesting. This is from Wiley over email. Uh, is that something you can show on gear tasting? Absolutely. That's why we're on location in front of the lake by headquarters. So what I wanted to walk through today is first off, I'm going to show kind of my maritime type loadout when I'm using my Klepper kayak. So what I have is a Klepper folding kayak um, that's been a little modified and I'm going to talk through some of that stuff. So the company that I got the, um, the hull from or the skin for the kayak is a company called Long Haul Folding Kayaks. They're out of Colorado. They're a U.S. based company. Everything's made in the U.S. But the original Klepper folding kayak design is from Germany and I was able to pick up an old frame from an old Klepper from a SF guy buddy of mine that uh, found a few through Dermo, so he sold me the spare set that he didn't use anymore, and that is what I'm going to be kind of talking through, kind of the repairs that I did as well as the setup. But before I do that, since this is gear tasting, I wanna talk about the gear behind the actual kayak type operations, so to speak. Um, so this is what I take on my loadout. So let's go through that first. All right, guys, so what I wanna start with on gear is uh, I typically always have a life jacket on me, whether it's actually on me or in the boat. Um, obviously, it should always be on you, but it is what it is. This is actually an old Blackhawk life jacket that I picked up at a, um, at a dive shop in San Diego. They used to have a dive shop right there off the five, right before you get on to the 75 bridge going into Coronado. Can't remember what the name of the dive shop was, but they used to have a gear store. And, this is actually an old school, original Blackhawk uh, float vest. So this is back when Blackhawk was making stuff in the US, which is one of the reasons it is still holding up today and it's still a great vest and I still use it all the time. The float pieces haven't degraded inside the vest, so it's still a great piece of equipment. Um, what I use this for is to hold kind of the, I guess you could call it survival stuff. I hate using that term, but um, this is what I would typically have on me in you know, case of emergency. Um, just to kind of walk through some of the stuff. So I have a compass up in here. I always carry riggers rubber bands with me because I never know when I'm gonna need those. They always come in handy. Um, so that is the compass in this part. In this pocket here, I have a whistle. So for signaling, and it's just a, an old government issue whistle. It's got a, I think it's a cork P in there. So I keep that there. And that's just girth hitch onto the shoulder strap. Then further down into this right pocket, I've got a couple of chem lights on a Velcro back thing in case I have to make a, a chem light buzz saw or something like that for signaling as well. Um, I've got a waterproof pen. I've got a map if I'm out and about and need to know where I'm going. I have a vacuum sealed um, emergency blanket. I've gone over kind of this survival kit before, but this is a survival kit I carry on me all the time. That's always with me when I'm out. And then the protractor that I have for navigation. And then, so there's a couple of pockets on the interior. This is a little hard to see, but I like it because it's got these elastic pockets in here. It's kind of nice and organized, keeps my stuff together. Um, carry a tourniquet in that pocket. I'm going to put this back as I'm 
Well, I'll pull it all out here. Then in the opposite pocket, um, I've got a radio. This is nice too because the external pockets open up into the internal pockets. So I've got a radio in here for comms and I've always got everything pretty much dummy corded in. Uh, stuff like this that's kind of in external pockets I don't necessarily, but especially when it comes to radios and comms, definitely always want to dummy cord that kind of stuff if it's something you're going to be accessing and using all the time. And you'll see that a lot in when I set up the kayak, I always dummy cord everything and like this bag here, this waterproof bag will be dummy corded in. Um, trauma kit, essential in my opinion. It's our, one of our ETA trauma kits. And I also have a headlamp because you never know when you're going to be out. It's a Princeton Tech. And then a little small handheld Surefire. I think this is the E1E backup flashlight or executive flashlight, sorry. And then that is the extent of kind of what's in the vest. Grab my comms. And then what I wanted to move to is a couple of other things. So always in the kayak with me in case I have to bail out or swim to shore. I always have a pair of fins. These are UDT duck fins. I've always got those on me as well as a pair of booties tucked into the fins. Um, always got a dive mask with me just in case as well. And then moving on here, this is the uh, Nemo Helio Pressure Shower, which the reason I carry this is because it's great for rinsing off kayak stuff after the fact. So uh, especially with the mud that you're going to see the kayak getting into in the lake, it's great to have this to fill with water and just rinse stuff off with. Uh, it's kind of invaluable in my opinion. Um, and then my sunglasses, I always have a lanyard or a uh, whatever you call these things. Um, so I can always keep my sunglasses on and put them around my neck if I have to pull my sunglasses off because like I said dummy cording is important especially when you're on the water especially when you're on the water so always have water with me that's super important in my book and then in this watershed dry bag which you open these like this make a little s it's a waterproof bag if you've never really heard of watershed before what's nice about these is this is an older school or old school bag but they all have these uh, external, I guess you call them a word that I can't remember. Anyway, so it's got the ability to, or inflation tube, there you go. So it's got the ability to inflate the bag when it's closed. So when it's sealed, you can add uh, air to the bag to make it buoyant. So especially great around the water. So as soon as I seal this up and I, you know, dummy cord this into the boat, I'll put air into the bag that way in case it does, if I do lose it, it's gonna float, not sink. So in this, I've got uh, my spare parts kit for the Klepper kayak. I've got a boo-boo kit. Um, the GPS will mount to a navigation board that I'll show you on the kayak, uh, but I will, I typically sometimes have this on my wrist too, just depending on situation. A uh, pair of gloves come in handy, especially when you're out for a long paddle. Um, these are, these dry fairly well. These aren't my neoprene ones that I usually have, but I couldn't find them. so. Just to demonstrate gloves, I grabbed those. Then I have a, a backup radio in here. Um, this is in a waterproof bag, so in case something happens to my primary radio, uh, I still have a secondary. And so the channels that are programmed into these radios um, include the weather channels. So Coast Guard monitors, I think, uh, I can't remember the channel that Coast Guard monitors. I believe it's nine or 13. I, I can't remember which, but at any rate, um, they monitor a VHF channel. So you're always, if you're in the water, it's always great to have a radio. Even if you don't have anybody to talk to, it's still great to have the ability to communicate with the Coast Guard channel. So make sure that's always programmed into a radio that you have. So then I usually have a sea wallet with my actual wallet in it. Um, best sunscreen in the world right here, Kinesis. 30 SPF. I've been using this for years and years and years. Love this stuff. Swear by it. Sunscreen is important. And of course, concealed carry in my bag and a knife. So that is kind of my loadout um, in addition to the bilge pump that I forgot to mention. So notice that this has got a dummy cord wrapped around it too because I tie this in when I'm in the kayak. But if uh, water gets into the boat, which it does, it just happens. Um, you're able to kind of bail out with this. It sucks water from the bottom and spits it out here. So 
you know, I can get this down into the kayak and just spit the water back over the side to drain the kayak. This is a uh, severely modified version of the same type of principle. Um, this was a trick I learned from our Boy Scout group when we were kayaking. So you can take an old milk jug and tape off the cap on the bottom of it or a water jug, um, cut it, and then you can use that to, you know, bail out water too. So that's an option if you don't have a bilge pump. So let's move on to the actual kayak. Okay, so I wanted to start off talking about the way that this is transported when it comes to the Klepper folding kayak. Um, again, I've purchased a lot of accessories as well as the hull from uh, this company, Long Haul USA or Long Haul Folding Kayaks. Um, one of the things they make is this bag system that I really love. It basically takes the entire system and puts it down into two man packable bags. So you can see there's shoulder straps on each one of these bags. There's the long bag which holds all the poles and parts. Um, and then this is basically the skin um, along with the ribs. And I'll bust all this out in a second, but just to show you, I wanted to just demonstrate first before I ditch the bags that everything folds down into this. So I'd say overall weight is somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 some odd pounds or 120 ish, somewhere like that. I'll probably weigh it all when this is said and done and try to post that as well. But um, at any rate, drink. Um, you can, two guys can basically maneuver this wherever you need to. I actually carried all this down here by myself. Rob didn't help me at all. Uh, he just sat there. But at any, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make you drink again. Um, but I just carried this bag in my hand and wore this one on my back and I was able to lug it all down here by myself. So um, let's get into what the kayak has. All right guys, so you can see now I've laid out all the parts for the Klepper kayak, and I'll kind of just walk through a couple of the pieces with you, but what we're gonna do for the sake of time is we're gonna show an elapsed video of me putting this together. Um, I've timed myself before, it takes me roughly 30 to 40 minutes to put this together by myself. Um, that includes some of the breakdown of parts that you saw just a second ago in the time lapse, um, or that you will see, but I'm not gonna walk through step by step what each part is, that type of thing. I will kind of give you a generic description of what this is, but uh, Mark Eckhart from Long Haul Folding Kayaks actually has some, a great three-part video on him putting together um, one of his long haul kayaks. While the parts are a little different than some of the clepper guts that I have, like the, uh, the skeleton, um, the process is pretty much the same for the most part, and I'll make sure I link to that in the description below. But um, to start out, what we're gonna do is assemble the bow, and then what happens is, is that the stern gets assembled separately, uh, those pieces get put into the hull, and then everything gets put together um, and snapped down together. So first off, here's the bow. So these are the gunwales, and they snap together like this. These are folding pieces, and they go like so and snap into the front. So I'm just gonna kind of lay these out here, just like so. And then, all right, so now this piece is called the keel board. And what we're gonna do with this is start to assemble this by first taking the bow piece here and putting this together. So this is kind of a pressure fit type deal here. Line these up. And these spread apart here. And the bow snaps together on the keel board.
And then we have our bow gunwales that go together. And we start assembling ribs. That's rib number one. Rib number two. And that's the extent of the ribs that get put together at this point. Okay, so that's the front of our end of our bow piece. I'm gonna move this out of the way and start on the stern. One thing that's important when folding the skin up, and you'll see that as I took this out, it was kind of the same way, but you never want to fold, I guess, directly onto the, the keel strip, meaning that you never want to fold the crease lengthwise right on the keel strip. So it's important to, uh, to note on the skin too. So what we're gonna do now is just take the, the skin out. And the first thing to do is insert the bow piece into the into the bow of the boat. All right, so the next thing to do is to lock the two keel pieces together. Make sure your hands aren't in the way. And since we're not on the un, or on, we're, we're on an uneven surface, it doesn't want to snap all the way. So I'm going to attempt to uh, straighten this out and put it on a more even surface. So these are a few of the last pieces. We're gonna put these in on the side. It's a little hard to see these going in, but these just complete the, the link between the front staff and the back staff on the port and starboard side. All right, so these pieces are called the combing, and this is what attaches to the front and allows the skin to snap into the, basically the rim around the opening in the kayak. So the combing actually snaps into the different ribs through these series of latches that just kind of latch together like that. And then once you have everything latched together, you start at the front here and take the skin. Start tucking it in like that. One of the last steps here is to secure the boomerang, and that's this large piece in the back. And that will get held on when we put in the rudder cables. What's great about the Klepper 2 is that it's got a rudder that's controlled by a footboard, 
so you can actually turn the kayak left and right without having to resort to using the paddle as your rudder. All right, so the next step is to install the seats. So another nice feature about the skin of the kayak is that it's got a lot of accessory slots on it, such as these uh, holders for the paddles. Makes it really nice and secure. So one of the last things I installed is this compass board, which I just have a Brunton kayak compass attached to this. So this is great for me to get an eye on where I'm headed when I'm paddling. So normally the, uh, the number one man would typically be on a GPS guiding where we're going, uh, but I always need to kind of have a, have a heading as the, as the pilot of the boat. All right, one of the last things we're gonna do is inflate these sponsons. These are bladders that go the full length of each side of the boat. They help give the boat buoyancy in the kayak. Uh, there's two aft, two four, we're gonna inflate them. So as we're loading up, I'm tying everything in. I'm using bow lines, just in case you're curious. And before you correct my pronunciation again on our Knot of the Week series, it's a bow line because it's the bow of the boat. And technically, I'm tying to the stern, though. Something that's great about the Klepper and the long haul in general for folding kayaks is they have a ton of storage space. There's a lot in the, the front of the boat, in the fore section, and the aft section as well. So what's great about long haul is that they give you the option to add these loading ports in. So these are interior access points into the boat. So that same stuff that I just loaded behind the seat can actually be put in through one of these loading ports as well. And they just roll up. They're waterproof seals. And close back up. All right, guys, so that's essentially it. It took a long time to assemble. Um, I was trying to talk through this as we went. Like I said, normally it's about a 30 to 45 minute process depending on how tired I am. But um, I really enjoy the Klepper kayak and the long haul hull. Um, it's made out of, I neglected to mention this, it's made out of Hypalon, the hull is. Um, it's the same thing that Zodiacs are made out of and uh, our Hypalon wallets as well. Uh, it, they're, they are a little pricey the, um, to buy a brand new off the shelf kayak from long haul. Will probably run you anywhere from $35 to $4,500. They're, they're not cheap. Um, but mine was a little bit cheaper because I just bought the skin from them and the combing. Um, I already had the frame obviously which I paid for separately. So kind of got the hook up on that. eBay has some, they ha often have good deals on Klepper kayak frames and as well as complete kayaks too. So definitely check there if you're interested in getting one of these. So, you know, like I mentioned, Klepper was originally a German kayak design, but so Mark Eckhart, who owns long haul folding kayaks was actually the U.S. representative and repair shop here in the U.S. for Klepper of Germany. So through that, he learned kind of the intricacies of the kayak, um, what worked, what didn't work, and then kind of went back to the drawing board and developed his own frame and his own kayak. So that's kind of where the, the origin of Long Haul came from. They're a great company. I've been uh, super impressed with the customer service I've got from them and just all the help along the way in my construction project. I had to do quite a few repairs to the 
the frame as I mentioned so uh, Mark was actually instrumental in answering my questions and you know that was before he even knew I was part of ITS so that was strictly from the uh, the consumer perspective so um, I typically like to do that sometimes I'll you know get a feel for the company too and that's kind of what I'd like to be able to report to you guys too is that they are a very customer service oriented company and you know I got that feeling before uh, I was even an official representative so to speak of ITS but at any rate this is uh, my Klepper kayak so thanks for watching gear tasting if you have any questions be sure to use the pound tag gear tasting on any of the social media networks and we'll get them answered I apologize we didn't do much more than go over the kayak today we just had the one question but uh, remember to pick up your gear tasting coffee mug the link is below and uh, also if you're enjoying what we're doing please consider supporting the membership uh, the link is below as well thanks for watching